Have you ever wanted to be known for something, but that something is being the youngest woman to ever be in the execution chair? Well, today we're going to go over Christina Pike. Welcome, angry people. Yes, that's right. We're going to go over Chris, uh, Christina Pike, uh, the youngest woman to ever be in the electric chair or uh, awaiting execution, as I should say. Uh, we'll get down to that. Now, let's go into the, let's get started. How's that, everybody? Uh, Christina Pike was born 1976 and uh, to, Christina Pike was born in 1976 to Carissa Hansen and Emil uh, Glenn Pike in Beckley, West Virginia. Her parents were tremendous re in a tremendous relationship. Being only married for two years, divorced after a year, uh, when Hansen found out uh, to be cheating and remarried another two years after Hansen attempted suicide. Both of them were frequently negligent to the child. Uh, to Christina, uh, an aunt noted that the infant Pike would be crawling around through piles of dog stool all over the house, and that Hansen wanted to keep parring, a party, parring. God, I can't believe I can't speak. Starting out this, uh, it, this is going to be a fun one then. Uh, when she received news that her taller was experiencing severe seizures. Pike's parent, uh, grandmother would frankly uh, help care for her. Pike's believed that she was the only one that actually loved her. Uh, when her grandmother died in 1988, Pike made her first suicide uh, attempt at age 12, uh, for which she received little support. Pike's living situation continued to be unstable throughout her teenage years, as she was both the recipient and perpetrator of violence. One of her mother's boyfriend punched her square into the face. Criminal charges were filed, but then settled. They st uh, stated uh, stay while staying with her father's new family. One of her younger uh, half sisters claimed to have been molested by Pike, causing her father to send her away. Pike's additional claims to have been sexually assaulted and molested at several points in her time. After friends and family doubted these occurrences, noting that she had been a pathological liar. In one instance, a man phoned claiming that he had he was going to rape her. In response, Pike and a friend beat him with a stick in a parking lot. Although she had been uh, bright as a child, her unstable home life caused her to be frequently charged uh, changing schools causing her performance in school to de uh, de uh, deteriorate. In 10th grade, she uh, was sent to a juvenile facility for a year where she became interested in the Job Corps. Now, the Job Corps is a government-aimed program helping lower-income youths by offering vocational training and career skills. I know lots of people that actually done Job Corps, and it's actually a pretty good uh, thing to, one, you get out of your area, to go to a different location to work at, uh, you know, whatever labor they have. And it could be like construction, which most of the times it's construction, but other things that you can find in the Job Corps. So check them out. Uh, in the fall of 1994, Pike attended a now-closed Job Corps Center in Nashville, Tennessee. Pike began uh, dating a man, her year junior, named... Oh, God. I looked over at this name because it's ridiculous spelling and everything, but hold on. Tatterill. Tatterill Ship. God. And it's spelled where T-A-D-A-R-Y-L. Tatterill. That, that threw my dyslexia into the loop. Anyways, together they developed an occurrence uh, interest into the occult and does worship it. A worshiper. Now they're crime. Christina became jealous of her job, uh, job corps classmate, 19-year-old uh, Colin Slimmer, who has uh, thought uh, she was trying to steal her boyfriend away from her. Friends of Slimmer uh, denied these occasions. Uh, along with her friend uh, Sedona Peterson, 18, Pike planned to lure Sl uh, Slimmer to an isolation in an attempt to st uh, steam plant near the University of T uh, Tennessee campus. On J uh, January 12, 1995, Pike shipped uh, Peterson and Slimmer signed uh, out of the dormitory and proceeded to the woods where Slimmer was told that they wanted to make peace by offering her some marijuana. 
Yeah, I said it like that. I know it's marijuana, but marijuana. I like that way better. <laughs> Upon arrival at the uh, su uh, secluded location, Slimmer was attacked by Pike ship while uh, Peterson, uh, Peterson acted as lookout. According to the later court testimony, for the next 30 minutes, Slimmer was taunted, beaten, slashed, and a pentagram was carved into her chest. Finally, Pike smashed uh, Slimmer's skull with a large chunk of asphalt, killing her. Pike kept a piece of Slimmer's skull. Pike began showing off the piece of skull around the school, and within 36 hours, the three had been arrested. The logbook showed that Pike, Ship, Peterson, and Slimmer left together, and only three returned. Detectives uh, found the piece of skull in Pike's jacket pocket. <laughs> Not, not, okay. You get rid of the fucking evidence, people. I'm not trying to condone violence and horrible acts of humanity, but get rid of the fucking evidence, people. Anyways, soon after arrest, Pikes confessed to the police of torture and killing Slimmer. But instead, they were milling trying to scare her, and things got out of control. During the trial... Uh, the prosecution uh, added, uh, aided by evidence and Pike's confession. Pike's charged with first-degree uh, murder, or mere murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. On March 22nd, 1996, after a few hours of deliberation, I'm surprised I made it out with that one, Pike was found, that was one of my hard words, uh, Pike was found guilty on both counts on May uh, March 30th, Pike was sentenced to death by execution uh, for the murder and charges uh, for the murder charge and 25 years in prison for conspiracy charges. I, 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 I get the extra charges and everything, but it sounds ridiculous if you already get, get them charged for murder and they're already going to get the death sentence. So, but anyways, uh, ship received a life sentence with the possibility of parole plus 25 years. Peterson, who had turned informant, received a probation for pleading guilty uh, to being an accessory after the fact. <coughs> Following the guilty verdict, Pike launched and uh, canceled and re then relaunched an appeal for her conviction in the Tennessee State Courts in January, uh, June 2001. Then again in June 2002, uh, against the uh, advice of her lawyers, Pike asked the courts to drop her appeal and sought uh, to be executed via electrocution. Criminal Court uh, Judge Mary Beth Lebowski, uh, Binsky, Stephanie Hawking, I call upon you to give me a extra reading on this one. Leibowitz. Leibowitz. I was totally off. Uh, granted the request and an execution date uh, was changed to August 19th, 2002, was set. Pike soon thereafter uh, changed her mind in July 8th, 2002. Defense lawyer filed a motion to allow the appeal process to continue. This motion was denied. However, on August 2nd, 2002, a three-judge state appeal court panel ruled that the proceedings should be continued and the execution not carried out. Oh, God, don't. Fuck those three judges. Sorry. But yeah. In December 2008, Pike's latest request for, uh, for a new trial was turned down and she was returned to death row. With the denial, Pike's allowed appealed under the rules of prosecution in the state of Tennessee criminal system were exhausted. In May 2014, Pike's lawyer entered an appeal in the federal court system. Her lawyers sought a commute, uh, communion, a communion, Communication, communication of the sentence uh, from death to prison uh, on the following grounds. In effect, in the sentences to counsel, Pike suffered from mental illness uh, and capital punishments as administration in Tennessee was unconstitutional. And a 61-page ruling by the U.S. District Judge uh, Harry S. Manis Jr. issued on March 11th. 2016 on all grounds were rejected and the request communed communicate communication and yeah this is a fun one because i can't talk really today commutation commutation jesus okay 
sorry, people, but you know, sometimes Monte Selexia just kicks up in a high gear. On August 22nd, 2019, after uh, heard the same appeal by Pike's lawyers on October 1st, 2018, the three, uh, three judge United States Courts of Appeals in the Sixth Circuit uh, panel ununanimously upheld the lower court ruling and denied relief. Now, on August uh, 24, 2001, Pike, with allegation, uh, alleged assistance from inmate Natasha Cornett, attacked and attempted to strangle fellow inmate Patricia Jones on a shoestring, uh, with a shoestring. Nearly successfully in choking her death, Jones had been serving a life sentence uh, for 1995 murder of a 84-year-old uh, Albert Coker uh, in Knoxville at the time of her attack. Pike's, uh, Pike was convicted of attempting first-degree murder on August 12, 2004, Although it is a position of Tennessee Department of Corrections that uh, Cornette uh, assisted in this crime, their investigation concluded there was insufficient evidence to charge her with helping Pike attack Jones. And by the way, it happens a lot in prisons. There's a lot of attacks, but you know sometimes you don't get you know evidence of that one. Now she also had an attempted prison break in March 2012. In a uh, reveal that Pike had made an escape plan to volunteer corrections officer Justin uh, Hanfin and a New Jersey man named Donald uh, Cohut. Stephanie Hawking, please once again grace us with your presence and give us an idea what this name is. Cohut. Cohut. A Cohut. Uh, though it has never been determined uh, how exactly began Cohut who worked with a personal trainer and was then in his elderly 30s, early 30s, uh, entered in elderly 30s into a letter writing cor correspondence with Pike around being uh, beginning of two, uh, 2011. By July uh, that year, Kohut uh, was making a close to a 1,800 car round trip to Fleming, New Jersey, to Nashville, Tennessee, uh, C, to visit Pike in prison on uh, visit his days once or twice a month. Eventually, uh, Kohut committed a plan to uh, help her escape and listen to the helps of correction officer uh, Helfen, who agreed to participate in return for cash and gifts. I kind of want to know what the gifts were. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a Limelight. I couldn't find anything, but I kind of really... Anyways, because of the security concerns, uh, Tennessee Department of Corrections uh, had not provided many details about the plan. However, the eventually unsealed uh, and documented uh, laid out a scenario where a prison key would be uh, traced and then duplicated uh, early in 2012. The prison personnel received information about the escape plot. This led an attempted uh, prison break uh, being thwart, uh, thwarted uh, by a joint investigation involving in Tennessee Department of Corrections, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and the New Jersey State Police. According to TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the plan was not very far along when uncovered and the jailway, uh, jailbreak was not in imminent. In I wonder if it's that if it's not really, I mean, just the planning stages, I know uh, inmates, they get uh, they get more time. But I wonder about the other people since it will not have been committed yet. I guess it's just conspiracy to commit crime. Uh, in March 2012, Kohalt was arrested and charged with bribery, conspiracy to commit escape, while Huffin was arrested and charged with bribery. Uh, okay. I guess uh, that answers that question. Officially, uh, misconduct and conspiracy to commit escape. Pike was not charged. Uh, and it was unclear to the investigators if she was a participant in the conspiracy uh, other than being aware of it. Uh, on March, uh, May 31st, 2012, uh, Kohawk was sentenced to seven years in prison, uh, the time to be served at Tennessee 
State uh, Northeast Correction Complex. Huffin, who cooperated with uh, authorities after his arrest, served no prison time, but was terminated from his job in the Tennessee Department of Corrections. Oh, God, Texas, fuck you up. Yeah, they they throw the book at you for anybody, any officers that's trying to help out uh, break a inmate out. Now, her schedule of execution was scheduled on August 27th, to, uh, 2020. Uh, Tennessee Attorney General uh, Herbert Slatery. Hold on real quick. Stephanie, once again, big words are hurting me. Slatteries. Slatteries. Uh, office requests Tennessee Supreme Court to set an execution date for Pike due to the COVID-19 pandemic in uh, Tennessee and various other factors. Pike's attorneys were uh, granted an extension by the court, allowing them more time to argue as to why Pike should be not be executed. The state did not oppose the extension. On June 7, uh, 2021, Pike's attorney uh, filed a motion to uh, oppose the execution date and request certification of uh, communication. The motion was denied. Prior to uh, November, 22nd, uh, November 2022, uh, Pike had completed uh, exhausting all of her pill process. Uh, that's a thing for death row inmates. They always get uh, a certain amount of uh, appeals depending on what state. However, in November 2022, the uh, state Supreme Court found that the state law of juvenile uh, automation sentence to life imprisonment without a chance for parole was unconstitutional. Uh, see case state by uh, versus Booker for complete ruling. Uh, Eh, let's check this out. See how. Uh, by uh, the, uh, what what constitute this was the felony murder convictions emerged, and the uh, trial court imposed a mandatory sentence of life imprisonment following a sentence hearing. The trial court sentenced Mr. Booker to twenty years for the uh, aggravated robbery conviction to be served uh, congruently with his life sentence. Okay, I guess that's what it was i was just wondering uh on august 30th 2023 lawyers for pike used the november 22nd supreme court rulings uh state versus booker in an attempt to reopen her bid to have her 1996 conviction and uh sentence thrown out pike's lawyer argued her young age and damaged mental health at the time of the killing, uh, should spare her from the facing execution. In uh, October 2023, Knox County Criminal Court Judge uh, Scott Green denied uh, Pike's request, uh, saying in November 2022, Supreme Court ruling didn't apply to her. The Booker case addresses only juvenile uh, offenders in Tennessee. Uh, and Judge Green noted the high court, uh, in the opinion written by now retired Justice Sharon Lee, specifically addressed the question of juvenile, uh, juveniles, not adults. This ruling appeals only to juvenile homicide offenders, not adult offenders, uh, in the decision of the state. Pike, however, was a legal adult when Green wrote it. As of March 10th, 2024, the state has not yet executed, uh, has an execution date for Pike. If Pike is executed, she will be the first woman to be executed in Tennessee in roughly 200 years. Now, that is it for this story, everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, kind of a quick one. But, uh, yeah, that's, I understand the legal process of... You know, so what if the person was innocent and they didn't get all their appeals? I understand that. And sometimes that very, very rare. And a, lot, and a lot of people are like, no, it happens all the time. No, it, it doesn't happen all the time. It's publicized a lot and big time over time. But uh, that appeals is, that is a safety feature for when you have to uh, execute somebody like that when they do or, or they're accused of a horrible crime we'll say that i guess it's a legal, legal a little bit of legalese there uh but <clears throat> yeah that's that's how it is sometimes you have to do appeals and everything 
if there is like really damaging damaging uh, evidence, I think Ron Wright said it best. It's like te Texas put in an express line for the three or four, uh, three or more uh, people witnessed the crime. So, which if they had three people, anyways. Uh, one note on everybody uh, that actually listens to this, and I'm I'm surprised I've actually got more more viewers on this. It, it, it's it's really awesome, and thank you all for actually doing it. Uh, really, I, I I really appreciate the time that you spend. I guess this is this is spending time with me. Uh, I guess if you want you want to do it, uh, I, thank you all for doing it, listening and everything. It. Even with the small amount and everything that I get, I appreciate everyone that actually does and comments and everything. I did. I want to actually do do want to address one comment I got on one of the episodes. I think it was the, I think it was the one with, uh, yeah, uh, Jack Stevens five eight five. Uh, if you're listening, uh, he wrote. And this is the only comment on that one. Uh, he wrote, glad I came across your channel. I think I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, enjoy your work. I'm a huge Bob Ross fan. So we got Bob Ross right up here. Uh, and and have uh, same stuff, uh, Bob, as you. I take my Bob uh, with me to all my oncology appointments. Uh, that's cancer treatment. Cancer appointments. Uh, he is my best bud and good luck charm. Can't wait to dive in the rest of your work. Uh, yeah, Jack Stevens, five eight five. We'll just go with that. Uh, I I I severely hope that you uh, get out of your cancer and keep on fighting there, buddy. Because you know, it, it, if you're ever down and everything like that, message me and we'll we'll have a conversation. I don't care. We'll be off air and not recording and everything. But it'd be nice to keep up with people and make sure they're doing okay. I, I, I do that an awful lot. A lot of the people that's been on on my shows I've contacted just is like, hey, how you doing? You doing good? Okay. I on small amounts, so I can do that quite frequently if I wanted to. It's not as hard. Well, if I get big time up there and you later in your when, when if and when this gets really big sharing with friends liking comment blah 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 uh but yeah I'll, I'll have a conversation with the person i don't care i've i've had conversation with really really weird people i'll, I'll give you i'll give you a little bit of tidbit i was i was i was taking care of a friend of mine's dog I was just going in his apartment, taking him for a walk, let him do his business and uh, feeding him and then going back. He, he had to go do something. Anyways, I ended up, I uh, was about to head back to the car and and this guy just drives up and says, hey, hey, is there, is there cops behind me? I'm like, oh, that's a weird request. Uh, look behind him and no cops. I was like, uh, no, sir. Well, apparently he's a paranoid schizophrenic. And uh, he's like, I was trying to get all my meds and everything. I'm trying to do the right thing. My meds were running out and everything. And I was trying, I was, I was like, hey, buddy, 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 buddy. The, what, 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 what can we do to alleviate this problem? Because he seemed a little bit high strung right now. And he was. And I, uh, it's it's more or less one of those things, safety for him and safety for the public. More or less safety for him because I was, yeah, I'm pretty freaked out a little bit, but not entirely too much. But but uh, I talked to the guy. He's like, I got I, I I think I got an appointment. I'm not really sure. We got this number. I was like, all right, I'll call the number on my phone and talk to him. Well, we I gather all of his information and everything. Got his information, phone called uh, the uh, place. Uh, they said, yeah, he's supposed to be uh, here at X amount of time. Uh, so I, I told him, it's like, hey, they're open. They're waiting for you. Do you, you, you got everything good? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, make that appointment, brother, because you, you're, you're seeming like a lot of distraught right now, and you don't need to be out in public right now. 
well, until you get yourself situated. He's like, yeah, I know, man. It's been hard and everything. I was like, yeah, it gets hard at times. Just every now and then, sometimes you got to talk to people and get them on the straightened path. But anyways, everybody, like I said, everybody, love you guys. Thank you for listening. Hope everybody's doing well and keep it good.